All right, so um, I'll get us started here. Um, my name is Marissa and I work with the American Heart Association. And um, we're here with a program called Eat Smart with our Hard Hats with Heart. Um, Hard Hats with Heart is our initiative here in Washington to um, give health education out to a lot of our construction companies. And so we've been doing a lot with blood pressure um, over the past few years and going out to job sites and taking blood pressure and getting people aware of what their numbers are. Um, but here in October, we're actually going to focus a lot more on nutrition and eating healthier. And so we are kicking off an Eat Smart Challenge um, with a lot of our construction companies across the Puget Sound. And so that's what we're going to do today. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about what that challenge is and get people interested in enrolling. And then I'm actually going to kick it over to Katie and she's going to talk about all of the nutrition and healthy eating part of it. Um, so to sign up for the Eat Smart Challenge, it's super simple. All you have to do is text Eat Smart one word to five one five five five, and what that will do is it's gonna send you a lot more information about eating healthy directly to your phone. So it'll send you um, some ways to do some swaps. It will kind of elaborate on a lot of the stuff that Katie's gonna talk about. And each week, there'll be kind of a different focus on the information being sent to you. So week one, we'll be talking about just adding fruits and vegetables. Week two is how to reduce some salt and sugar in your foods. Um, week three is going to be packing healthy lunches and what does that look like? Um, and, you know, how do we pack something lunch or pack a healthy lunch to a job site? And then um, week four is just some different swaps and recipes that you can try to just eat healthier. Um, so yeah, so keep an eye out. I know um, some of you might have received this um, flyer through your email or maybe received an email about the Eat Smart Challenge. So just make sure that you sign up and you can get tons of really great information um, about eating healthy to your phone. So I'm going to switch it over to Katie. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the time today. Uh, I just wanted to double down on Marissa's note um, about the challenge because I feel like behavior change around nutrition is really hard. Our taste buds like what they like. Uh, eating healthy isn't always convenient. So when you have that help in your pocket via your cell phone, sending you text messages and reminders and way to kind of check in, it is a good reminder to help, you know, do this thing gradually. This doesn't need to be an overnight change. So with that being said, I think one of the first steps to starting to kind of just making some more helpful swaps in our diet is to understand how to read a nutrition label. So I want to spend like, I don't know, a minute on this because it can be complicated. There is a lot of writing on this page right here. Um, but when you buy any sort of packaged food, it will always have a nutrition label. And I have my little like sample prop right here. Um, so when you quickly turn over the bag, so yes, there's lots of things on the front here. I don't even pay attention to that other than the quick flavor. Yeah, I like barbecue. Turn around, check the label. So if I'm worried about my sugar intake, let's say I have a sweet tooth and I'm going to start cutting back on that. The first thing I'm going to do is look at that included 10 grams of added sugar line. So you see in the daily value, that says 20% of your daily value. Well, you just need to make kind of a quick calculation. Do I want this small bag of chips to be 20% of all the sugar I have in the day? If so, great. But maybe you really love that sweet drink, that maybe that sweet frappuccino in the morning, and that is going to have a lot of sugar as well. So you just have to start being calculated on your decisions there. Uh, another quick thing to look at is the sodium content. So sodium is one of those things that um, we don't really think much about, and the numbers can seem like a lot. I think we can have like up to 3,500 milligrams a day. That seems really high, but when we eat a lot of packaged foods, it can add up quickly. So again, uh, scrolling over to that where it says 7% of that daily value, do a quick calculation. That doesn't seem like too much for a day. Okay, this is the choice I'm going to make. Um, and then for calories, this was a hard one to calculate because calories is just a, a product of energy, how much body, how much energy your body needs um, basically to do what it needs to do every day. Um, but one thing that is kind of in coordinates with calories here is that serving size. So if the serving size of a bag of chips is 230 calories and you're eating two bags of chips, you got to remember that that number automatically doubles, right? And then 460 feels like a lot more than 230. So just being quickly mindful of maybe how much we're eating. Um, are we drinking a whole drink, a whole, you know, 
42 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola when really that's meant to be enjoyed in a couple couple servings. Um, so that would be the first thing about the um, nutrition label. Don't overthink it, but those are a couple line items to be mindful for. And then we'll move on to the next page. Okay, so this is my favorite page because really when we eat more fruits and vegetables, we are immediately doing so much for our body. Uh, Typically, when we're eating more fruits and vegetables, it means we're eating less of the processed foods. So right there, we're already making a really nutritious, nutritious, helpful switch. Also, a lot more evidence is being shown when we eat more fruits and vegetables. It is doing incredible things for our gut, which therefore does incredible things for our mood, for our brains, for our energy. So if you're like me some days and just the clouds come in and you get really tired in the middle of the day, um, it might just be because you don't have enough nutrients in your body. So reaching for something that is colorful, um, you know, a pack of carrots, a handful of cherry tomatoes, a banana, an apple, that's really going to provide you that energy boost that you need. Um, and then again, fiber. Fiber is something that our bodies need, our guts need it, and really it only comes from fruit and vegetables and whole grains. So if we're not getting enough of those in our diet, um, we're really doing a disservice to our to our guts, to our GI tract, um, and really to our minds. So one quick life hack here, swap out one bag of processed food for a handful of veggies and you are going to be doing a great thing. Okay, serving sizes. These can be a little bit tricky because sometimes you don't have your measuring cup in your back pocket. And maybe not everyone knows what a half a cup of orange juice looks like. Um, and then if you do know what a half a cup of orange juice looks like, who really drinks half a cup, right? We're usually gonna drink a cup or more. Um, so again, this is where we just need to be a little bit mindful. And again, being a part of this challenge is gonna help you be a little bit more mindful. So thinking about um, you know, how much, how much orange juice do I need at breakfast? Okay. Maybe just a half a cup versus a cup. Um, how much protein do I need? Um, can I get protein in other ways? Maybe a handful of nuts is a nice, good, new, um, protein kick. So you don't need to have the measuring cup stored in your car, uh, but really just trying to think through what is going to fill my body. What does it need? How much might be too much? Um, and then listening to your body. So if you start to feel full, that's your cue. That's your sign that you probably don't need more than what you're eating, but you have to tune in. You have to be aware. You have to be mindful. The sodium, the sneaky sodium. So sodium, as you can imagine, doesn't really exist in fruits and vegetables. It does exist, though, in the foods that are convenient, that we love to eat, the pizza, the bread, the sandwiches, the soup, the lunch meats, which seems unfair because these are all the foods that are easiest to pack and eat when you're out on the go. Um, but there are tips and tri tricks that we can switch, which we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about later. Um, but I do just want to call out real quick that even though I know added sugar has gotten a lot of attention lately, um, as it should, and also fat, you know, fat's a scary word. Um, I think we've now kind of are more aware that fat isn't so bad. It's maybe the saturated fat we need to be more aware of. And now I think we're shining a little bit more light on sodium. So sodium is linked to risk of stroke, heart failure, and elevated blood pressure, which I know um, there has been some push to to have you all check your blood pressure, be more aware of what's going on there. So sodium will play a role in keeping your arteries healthy, keeping your blood pressure where it needs to be. So that's why we want to spend a, a few moments on um, sodium today. So sodium is good. It tastes good. Our bodies often crave it. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's often in sneaky places. So pizza is a really high source of sodium, unfortunately, because of all the ingredients in pizza basically have sodium. So cheese, high in sodium. Tomato sauce, very nutritious, high in sodium. Um, if you add meat on your pizza, they also usually have a lot of sodium as well. So just be mindful of that. Um, chips, we all love our chips with our sandwiches. Um, but here's a quick swap that I'd like to show you real fast. So Lay's barbecue chips, they're delicious. We've switched, we pop it over to the backside to the nutrition label. 
we quickly find the sodium line and there's 290 grams of sodium, which is about 13% of your daily value. Well, that's a bummer. That seems like a lot for just a bag of chips. Right next to the barbecue Lay's chips were these pop chips. I've tried them. They have a little bit of a different texture, but the barbecue tastes great. They have 7% daily value of sodium. So not a huge difference, but if you're eating a bag of chips every day at work, it starts to add up. So these little tiny changes, you can still have your bag of chips, but maybe choose the ones that have less sodium. Those are the changes that's going to make a difference over time. Okay, so that is my one prop for there for the, the sneaky sodium in um, our chips. Um, and then another thing that we can think about is um, some things we add on to our to our food. So I will never tell you not to eat pizza again, but maybe hold off on the pepperoni because pepperoni has a lot of saturated fat, but it also has a lot of sodium. Maybe on your turkey sandwich, maybe we hold off on the pickles. Pickles, even though they may have nutrients that are good for our body, if we're watching our sodium pickles, high in sodium. Um, cold cuts and cured meats, typically high in sodium. Maybe we swap it out for a lean piece of chicken breast that we cook earlier in the week. Um, and then soup, soup can, also be a sneaky place of sodium, but that is where we can turn to the label and read the label if it is a soup that we are um, buying at the grocery store. Okay, I think that's it on sodium. I think I talked about that to a nauseam. All right, here are some simple switch switches. I um, already talked about it with our chips, um, avoiding the pickle. So pickle for cucumbers, a great option. If you still want that crunch, a pickle is a cucumber that hasn't been drenched in vinegar and in salt. So um, you're still getting um, the same nutrients, the same crisp, but now. Um, good. Okay, sorry, I had some feedback there. Um, and then potato chips, yeah. So maybe a handful of unsalted almonds, or maybe you find the less sodium um, pop chips. Um, and then for dinner, yeah. So just being mindful at home, just to go through the grocery store quickly takes two seconds, flip the labels side by side of your favorite soups, choose which one is lower in sodium. Um, maybe add in a side of vegetables instead of a side of something else that might be sodium packed. So not changing your whole lifestyle here, just making little changes. Also one quick thing and fun fact, potassium, which we all know is in bananas, if you don't know, it's in bananas, um, offsets sodium in the bloodstream. So if you are someone who feels that you take in too much sodium, try to eat a piece of food that has potassium, like a banana. So that's a, a great helpful snack that will help offset the sodium in your bloodstream. Okay, drinks. This is my second favorite slide after the colorful vegetable slide because we Americans love our sugared beverages, whether it's the Frappuccino, it's the Coca-Cola, it's the sweetened iced tea. Um, our brains love it. It is a huge hit of dopamine, and it also it can be a awesome energy source when consumed right. So I imagine that many of you have early mornings, have late nights, and coffee is a go-to. Coffee is actually... Um, a great source of caffeine. It can also be hydrating, um, but it's when we add in the sugar and the heavy creams where we can start to see some adverse effects over time. So this is my challenge for you. If you're someone who drinks that cup of coffee in the morning and you put two scoops of sugar in it, maybe this week you only put one scoop of sugar in it. Maybe if you're the person that loves this sweet snapple tea, maybe next time you turn the label over, and you realize that it has 99% of your daily value of added sugar. So drinking this basically puts you at the limit for your added sugar for the day, which is a big bummer, especially if this is something that brings you joy. So maybe instead of never drinking this again, because your taste buds crave this and want it, maybe you ration it out a little bit. Maybe the first week you only drink half a serving right? So you drink half of this bottle and you'd also save money. Um, maybe then after that, you drink a quarter of the bottle until your taste buds start to adjust. 
Maybe you really love that peach flavor and you can switch to something that is a little bit flavorful because sometimes water is just boring. Um, but our hint water here, peach flavored, same as our iced tea, has zero calories, zero added sugar, zero sodium. Yes, switching from this to this is hard, but it's easier when you do it over time. And with our challenge, about a four week long challenge, these are little little baby steps you can make throughout the, the month that will help limit the added sugar, maybe limit the sodium and start putting you in the right step to just a healthier overall lifestyle. Also, according to the picture here, I see the lime in the water. This is another life hack. Sometimes when you're out and you're working hard and you need to be hydrated, drinking water is just sometimes boring, frankly. Um, so something as simple as just squeezing a little bit of lemon in your water can be a nice little like taste bud kick in, um, and recommended or bubble water as well. It's also, um, if you drink club soda, not tonic water, um, zero calories. And sometimes the fizz is a nice kind of energy boost. Okay. That is it for the smart water. All right. Buying lunch, packing lunch. Uh, this is challenging because a lot of the foods that we need to throw into um, our lunch boxes have to have to be cold. They have to be heated, um, which can make it a little bit challenging. But I wrote down some ways to try to think through the week um, and make some more helpful decisions for your lunches. So I think a go to is just like a turkey cheese sandwich. As we talked about turkey. Uh, processed meat can be high in sodium. Cheese can also be high in sodium sometimes. Um, so instead, maybe making, um, you know, grilling up five pieces of lean grilled chicken breasts for the week and then making a chicken breast sandwich. You can still have some cheese, maybe you put a little mustard or mayo, um, some lettuce. That might be a really good um, alternate to those processed meats. High in protein will keep you full throughout the day. Um, nuts are a great snack. And sometimes if you're not used to it, they're not going to be the most, uh, I guess, like satiating at first. They might, you might miss your barbecue lays, barbecue chips. Um, but after a while you will start to crave them. Your body will start to appreciate the lean protein you're giving it. Um, and it also keeps you full. So if you're someone who eats a meal and then two hours later hungry again, it's probably because you don't have enough protein and fiber in your meals. So eating eating vegetables, eating plants, eating nuts is a way to help your body stay full longer. Um, hard boiling eggs. This is another great tip. Um, they don't have any sodium in them naturally. So if you hard boil the eggs and then add a little bit of salt yourself, um, that's a nice healthy snack. Um, full of protein will keep you full longer. Um, and then let's see what else. Oh, for ordering out. So this is this is another place where it just takes tiny tweaks. So um, pasta, burgers, Asian food, seafood, pizza, soups, vegan, yum, all of it. And it all can be done in a nutritious way. So for example, the pasta, um, whole wheat pasta does not taste a lot different, especially if you have sauce on it, um, but it has fiber. And when there's fiber in your belly and in your gut and in your stomach, you feel full longer. So you crave food less often. Um, so there's a great simple switch there if there's a whole wheat option. Um, another option for almost any of the takeout orders is see if you can't split it with a friend. I know this is like a taboo idea, but sometimes the meals are really big. And because they're there in front of us and we paid for it, we eat it. Even if we're full after half of it. So maybe get a buddy, go have these, split it with a friend. And then if you're still a little bit hungry, pack some snacks from your home. It'll be more economical and it'll for sure be more nutritious. Um, and then same thing with like the pizza. Oh, I love a good pizza. I would never tell, not to tell anyone not to eat pizza, but maybe just think about the serving size. Do you need a whole pizza? Maybe half a pizza and then bring in from home an apple and some carrot slices. Um, maybe hold off on some of the processed meats because of the added sodium and saturated fat. And then I know I know sometimes vegan can be a scary word for people or vegetarian, but there are 
wonderful vegetarian options um, where you can pull back on some of the processed meats and the added sodium or the saturated fat by going with like an extra vegetarian pad thai or a tofu pad thai um, rather than like a beef pad thai. So simple tweaks there. This does not have to happen, happen every day, every meal, but being mindful um, and just really just kind of thinking through how can I make slight changes to my diet every single day? Um, maybe just starting at one meal a day. And from there, you'll start to be empowered and start to see the change and feel the change. Um, and then it's just a trickle down effect from there. Um, I also want to call out some of the other um, opportunities where we eat food out um, because it's great to order that popcorn movie, you know, or the uh, popcorn at the movie theater. Um, and it's great to not to have to cook at home and order out. But really, when you order at the movies, for example, they're going to give you a bag of popcorn this big. And because you're sitting there watching a movie, you just might eat it all. Instead, order the big popcorn and then ask for an empty bag. Portion out an appropriate amount in the empty bag. Maybe so it's like a quarter of what you purchased. And then once you're finished that, you could be done. Or maybe you want a little bit more. But because you're portioning it out and being mindful, you you are less likely to eat the entire bag and then feel overfull afterwards. Okay. Anything I'm missing there? I know there's there's more to this page, but I want to make sure I covered it all. Okay. So the swaps. Um, one thing that I try doing at my own house is um, homemade salad dressing. So I am a huge ranch fan, always have been. But when I can mix up a vinaigrette at home using about four ingredients, I feel very fancy and I impress everyone, even though it literally is like four or five ingredients. So all any of these sort of dressings can be found on the internet, but usually it involves some sort of oil, some sort of vinegar, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt, maybe some Worcestershire sauce or mustard. Um, so nothing that usually isn't already in your refrigerator at home. You mix it up, um, put it on a salad, you impress whoever you're with. Um, one other thing other, we talked about drinks. So just kind of trading off half for half, maybe until your taste buds start to adjust, maybe one less scoop of sugar in your coffee, for example, um, is making your own desserts at home. Um, one thing that we like to do in my house is just have smaller portions of what would already be a really good treat. So Shout out to Trader Joe's here. Trader Joe's has these delicious little chocolate Reese's cups that are about this big. It's hard to see. And sometimes at the end of a meal, we really want that sweet, savory bite of food. Great. Go for it. But really being mindful of the size is going to help you reach your nutritious goals. So grabbing one of those little sweet treat bites after dinner or after a meal is quite all right when you can sit there and take time to enjoy it. Um, also frozen yogurt is another great place where you're going to feel like you're getting that nice, cold, fulfilling dessert, but doesn't usually have as much saturated fat. Um, I want to talk about yogurt for a second because yogurt is a nice, quick snack. It can be sweet. It can be savory. Um, one life hack that I have is to mix Greek yogurt, not regular yogurt, but Greek yogurt. It has a lot higher protein. It has a lot less sugar, but then you can mix in your own sweet treats. So you can mix in granola. You can mix in some nuts. Um, you can even mix in a scoop of um, jelly or jam. So I love to take a little teaspoon of jelly and jam, mix it in. So now I have a strawberry yogurt. I take a handful of granola. And now it has a little bit of a salty bite. Um, and it is an awesome snack. You can even kind of trick yourself into the dessert. Maybe you throw some chocolate chips in there. Um, but really just a great way to feel like you're eating a nutritious meal that you can make at home um, and you know exactly what is in it. And yes, skip the candy when possible. Easier said than done. But small bites are better than eating while you're driving, eating when you're not paying attention, 
eating those candies while you're at the movie theater. So just being mindful. Great. Well, thank you so much. This was such an amazing presentation. And I think it's so nice to be able to just see like small changes that you can make um, in your diet that will just, you know, they add up to like eating healthier totally. versus just like trying to do like a quick, like start from, you know, the bottom all the way up. But I know that we have a few minutes left for questions. If anyone has some questions that they would like to ask. I was just going to say, I sometimes use gum as a dessert, like to get sweetness, <laughs> but, but it's not yes. as bad like eating something, you know, full of sugar. Totally. Yeah. Sometimes our mouths just want to be busy and sometimes we just need that little bit of dopamine that comes from sweet. Yeah. And, and if that is satiating to you and if that checks the box, that's a great little life hack. But I love that you're just like aware. You're like, this is all I need right now. If anyone else has a little life hack and, or maybe just like their, their own experience of how they made a little a micro change that's really um, changed the way they've thought about the way they eat, um, that'd be wonderful to hear a share out. I saw in the chat um, that somebody had asked on the Celsius energy drinks. Ooh, on, I don't like, know. Where your thoughts were. Hold on, I have to do a quick Google because there's so many energy drinks out. Celsius. Oh, here, let me do a nutrition label. Okay, I found it and I got to zoom in. Yeah, so at, at first glance, this seems like a great option. The only thing that makes me a little bit, it's hard for me to see it's blurry. Some of the, um, I'm trying to see what the artificial sweetener is or if there is an artificial sweetener. I can't see it. It's too blurry. But my first pass is this is a great option. Um, some of the energy drinks that are now available are, I think, they're doing really great things. They're adding in a lot of uh, vitamins that boost energy, a lot of B vitamins. Um, they have caffeine, which is not necessarily a bad thing as long as you're not taking it too late in the day and it's affecting your sleep. Um, the only thing that would just make me a little bit like eh, hesitant is sometimes they add in a, a bunch of um, artificial sweeteners or even sweeteners from natural sources that some evidence shows if you have a lot of it, it can kind of tweak your taste buds. So over time, you will not get pleasure out of actual like sweet fruits and vegetables. So like a raspberry or a strawberry, for example, will lose its kind of excitement to you. And then you will not crave the sweets, the sweet um, fruits as you should. Other than that, I think Celsius at first glance would be a really great option. Great. Thank you. And um, I know we're wrapping up here, but, um, you know, thank you so much for taking your time to present. And if anyone else has questions, um, feel free to send me an email. And like I said, just um, sign up for the Eat Smart Challenge and you'll get a lot of the stuff that we kind of talked about um, sent to your phone, but also give you out some more information to learn more. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.